Look, it's over. This, this season is over. Just punt it. Just move on, Mavericks. Oh. It's, the damage is done. Oh, it, yes. We'll talk about that, too, because they have to look a little bit into the future on that. But Dallas has lost six of their last seven. Uh, they do have their last three games all at home against Kings, Bulls, and Spurs, Shams. As far as the mindset of this team heading into these final three games, we won't go in the offseason yet. That's coming. But what is it going into the last three games? Well, I think the Mavericks have to seriously look at whether you shut down Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving these last three games, maybe two games of the regular season, this is a team uh, that is one game out of the play-in behind Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, I believe, has the tiebreaker over them. So they're, in, they're essentially two games out of the play-in with just three, you know, four games left. So you have to see what happens with Utah, what happens with Oklahoma City between now and Wednesday. The Mavs don't play again until Wednesday at home against the Kings. I'm told that the organization is seriously considering the possibility of shutting down those three guys. They have a top 10 protected pick. So being out of the play-in race, it behooves them not to try to keep their pick. And at that point, you have the flexibility of having that potentially top 10 pick. You have three first round picks that you can trade this off season to go get a, a, a star and potentially more players in the marketplace. They're gonna be one of the more active teams. So you go get Kyrie Irving, who's playing at an elite level. You try to go get him. Luka Doncic some help uh, and you have two guys in, in Luka and Kyrie that have been playing through stuff Luka's dealing with a thigh injury Kyrie's been playing through plantar fasciitis so uh, they clearly need more depth on this team uh, you know Kyrie Irving even though he's played at an elite level most of his time in Dallas he just has not clicked so far for this Mavs team as a unit um, and I think you're going to start looking at them over the next few days look into what exactly they want to prioritize going into the offseason <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's devastating the the kind of the run that they're on right now, and it's the exact opposite of what happened for the Lakers has happened for the Mavs. They they mix things up, they make a big trade, they bring in Kyrie Irving, and it has just been bad. They've gotten even worse defensively. They don't have depth. They still lack size. Their big guys don't give them a lot of production. Um, and this doesn't all fall on on Kyrie Irving. They have to find a way to re-sign him. They gave they gave up way too much to not. But I, I'm also, I, I can't just shut down these guys right now. I, I see what happens before Wednesday, before they play next. You know you're a better team than Oklahoma City. You know you can hang with them, New Orleans, Minnesota, in a play-in. You have the talent. If I'm them, I ride out this season. I don't care about the pick yet. I think I have enough talent with these two guys that if I just get into the playoffs, anything can happen. And, and they've dug themselves a huge hole. But I can't, with those two guys on my team, just shut them down when there's still even a glimmer of hope. I'm just riding it out. You're about to have five, six months off. Ride it <laughs> out. Happens. But, man, this has been a fall from grace. All year long, we're talking about the Lakers and how bad, and they're not going to make the playoffs. And the Mavs were a lock. And now the last month, they have just completely smoked it. They're dealing with injuries. They're dealing with chemistry, getting guys, you know, comfortable with each other. But... This has been a brutal stretch and absolutely devastating. And it will be even more devastating if they don't re-sign Kyrie Irving. See, I find that to be very interesting because you and Shams have both now alluded to the fact that they're just going to sign Kyrie and, and keep this thing rolling, Eddie. I, I don't know. Do you run it back with both Kyrie and Luca, or do you try to change this thing? I mean, I think technically they almost have to as far as their cap <sighs> situation goes and and – if they don't use that money on him, they it's not like they can spend it elsewhere in the summer. They, they, I guess they could do a sign and trade of sorts, but then you run into that situation where what is the market for Kyrie? Can you trade Kyrie for $40 million of stuff coming back? <laughs> I, I don't know that that's true. I think the trade deadline told us it's kind of iffy and, and things have gotten worse since then. Not even with Kyrie, he's actually played fine. But there's just that marker of like, what does he do for us? And I think right. Kyrie's a great player, and I think he played tremendous. I think it was ridiculous last night. He hit a clutch shot late, that layup we just showed, and he can be valuable to the right team. But I feel like there's going to be a lot of teams sitting there going, I don't think we're the right team. So, yes, in some senses, Dallas is essentially stuck. And then it turns into what do they do around those two players from there? Uh it's been tough. They've lost seven of their last eight games. They've been awful defensively. They gave up 129 points to the lowest scoring team in the league the other day. Uh, a team where Jimmy Butler may or may not be trying. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> and they just continue to have these issues. And on top of that, like, 
yo, the morale on that team, like the quotes that are coming out of some of these scrums are just like those guys are ready for vacation. I'm with Chandler. They should not shut everybody down. But I'm not going to be shocked when Sham sends out the tweet and tells us, yeah, it's it's time. Kyrie and Luca are going home and uh, enjoy these rest of these three games, Mass fans. Oh, God. Shams, you're sitting yeah, there like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, when, it, mm-hmm. when, when it comes to Kyrie Irving, they gave up two starters, a first round draft pick, and they gave up multiple second round picks for him. So like Chandler said, to, to not bring him back, I think would be so much more devastating for that organization than bringing him back. I think the feeling that you would have if you if Kyrie Irving walks, let's say to a Phoenix or to a Clippers or another organization and you don't get anything back for him, there's no such thing for the Mavericks as let's see how life is with no Kyrie Irving and let's see if this team is better. Because at that point, you literally reach rock bottom and then you're looking at Luka Doncic. Like you literally have to look into rebuilding because there's no way to maximize that roster hold and that money from a financial perspective. So um, I, I still believe the Mavericks first and foremost priority this offseason is bringing back Kyrie Irving on a deal. And then from there, you have three first round picks, you have salaries to go out in the marketplace, whether you want to go get a star player, whether you want to get other, uh, you know, rotation type of guys, they clearly need bodies in the front court on the wing. So you have to try to rebuild this team around those two guys. And Figure out what kind of talent you can get in here. Luka Doncic is still under contract with a player option through 2026. So it's not like they're, they're oh, here with, with kind of the time running out on Luka Doncic. It feels to me like, and look, by the way, I preface all of this by saying these are two amazing players in the league, but that doesn't always work. Just because you put them together, that's not the right formula. It feels like this maybe was a mistake, but now we're going to double down on this mistake because you feel like you can't do anything else. So it's a, it's almost depressing if you're a Mavs fan, but Jason Kidd, Mark Cuban, especially Mark Cuban right now, because we know how competitive he is about his team. How much pressure Chandler is going on in that front office? And to be a fly on the wall, I would also like to add, because again, Jalen Brunson would have signed for four years, $55 million. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. How much pressure do you think they're putting on themselves? There's a lot of pressure, and it definitely hasn't (laughs) gone, obviously, the way that they expected it. They thought this was going to turn around. They were so excited. They thought this made them one of the best teams in the conference, if not the league, and it just hasn't, and it hasn't worked. And again, it's not Kyrie Irving. It's not Luka Doncic. Collectively, this team's just not working. They don't have defense. They don't have toughness. They need. They have so many holes where the talent of Luka and Kyrie is not even able to carry them. And like we just touched on, you have to resign him. If they don't, and this is just a three-month rental, and you gave away two starters and all those picks, it's one of the worst trades ever. If they don't resign him, so I don't care if it if it's not if it hasn't gone as planned. I don't care if it if you're going to not make the playoffs. You have two generational talents, and that's attractive to free agents this summer. That's attractive to guys wanting to make a move and come join those two guys. And it, it, they're, they're going to forget about this month. They're going to forget. Come this summer, one of the uh, they sign a third guy, we're then talking about how good the Mavs are next year, and they can't be that without re-signing Kyrie Irving and losing all that stuff. So this it hasn't gone as it hasn't gone as planned, but yeah, they have to double down. They have to resign him, or this is brutal. Wow, what a what a weird circumstance to have put themselves 